thank you very much for the opportunity to share my research with you. Uh, so this is a collaborated work with Steph von Seller and uh, from Stanford University. And uh, so the title is The Impact of the Advertising Along the Conversion Funnel. So the focus of this research uh, is in the feature advertise, is on the feature advertising uh, in grocery stores. Our objective is trying to trace the impact of feature advertising throughout different steps of the consumer's decision process. To achieve this goal, what we did is we assembled a very unique data set that combining the data from IRI, the scanner data set, and with a path tracking data set. And through this uh, assembling of the data, what we are able to achieve is to uh, find out the travel path of a consumer throughout the grocery store. And we also have the map of the, the layout of the grocery store, so we know exactly where the consumers stand in front of a product and with the exact time. And we pull the data from IRI, the scanner data, and the, using the feature advertising and the, as well as other marketing activities. And uh, so at the end, and when the consumer check out, we figure out what's inside the basket and what price they paid for each one of those products. And so why is this data set so unique? Because traditionally, researchers or uh, manufacturers, retailers, what they have is only, they are only to um, observe the purchases at the checkout and then try to relate the checkout, the content back to the marketing activities. So in our case, because we have the past tracking data as well, and it allows us to link the feature advertising to every step of the decision process. And we are able to figure out the impact of the advertising on the category traffic and in front of each of the shelf. And also in front of the shelf, how long the customer spent in front of it. And the search time, uh, yeah, the timing and the duration of each one of those visits. And also we look at the spillover within and across categories across different shelves. And ultimately what our goal is um, trying to shed some insights about how advertising affect the decision process and to give some managerial uh, suggestions, prescriptions for the manufacturers and retailers in terms of how to manage their uh, advertising spendings. And uh, so first to give you some high level theory about a feature advertising, how we think about it. And so if you think about this, uh, so there is one type of uh, effect of advertising is will help customers to plan their shopping. They come up with a shopping list after they see the feature advertising on the circular, weekly circular, and then they will decide what to buy based on what's on sale. And so if this is the case, and what we should see in the data is, okay, for those products, those categories that's being advertised, they should have seen more traffic. There should be more people visiting those categories. And uh, possibly, and they should have visited those categories at an earlier time during their trip, all right? And uh, just to cross it off of their shopping list. Alternatively, and it could be a memory or a reminder story. So in this case, the consumer, they do not, after, even after they were exposed to the ads, and they don't come up with a shopping list, what they do is, okay, this ads just act as a consciously or not consciously as a uh, reminder or memory enhancer. So only when they got into the store standing in front of the shelf, now they remember, okay, all right, and I think I saw this ad earlier, and uh, it's on sale, okay, I will put it in my basket. So that's the memory story. And lastly, and another explanation is, okay, this may be, there may be some endogenous ad consumption going on. What I mean by that is this customer, even before exposing, being exposed to the ad, already planning to buy a certain product, say the paper towel. And then when the circular arrives and the customer will uh, attentively and carefully go through the ads and to see if the product that he or, or she already planned to buy is on sale or not. So in this case, and uh, we won't see an increase in the traffic either and because the customer already decided to buy anyway, and now it's just depending which product. Now it only affects what products to buy. All right, so some upshots of the finding. 
what we find through all the data and using the data uh, is, okay, feature that advertising does not increase the traffic, does not increase the category visits. And it does not change the timing or duration of the visits either. We do see there's an increase in the sales of those products that, that are being advertised. And uh, so, but it's by the same number of customers, but they are buying more stuff. Okay, increase in the bucket size and with a greater variety. And so, there, which I mean by that is there's a large spillover effect within the category. And in other words, even for some products that are not being advertised, if there's a competing brand or some other brands within the category are being advertised, right, they may benefit from those kind of advertisements. So this, there is this spillover effect, okay, within the category. So, uh, in short, this data pattern that we found, and I always think it's more consistent with the memory story as well as this ad consumption from the consumer side. All right, and uh, so enough, uh, enough uh, pre uh, uh, introduction. Now let's dive into the data. So the data that we got is actually quite unique uh, in the sense that we first, the first piece of the data that MVP in our analysis is this path tracking data. So we got data from one grocery store, and in their store, their, the carts and the basket were equipped with this radio frequency ID tag. And on the ceiling, in the ceiling, and they have this antennas installed throughout this, throughout. And so when the consumers, they push the cart around, the antennas receive the signal from the tag, they are able to triangulate exactly where a consumer locates in the store as well as the exact time of that consumer at that point. And so we have the shopping pass data in the store for 26 days and the timestamps along the pass. And at the grocery store, the checkout, and we found out the, uh, we have the basket uh, information and uh, what's inside, what's the price they paid. And then finally, and uh, so we got the marketing activity data and the feature advertising as well as other marketing uh, promotions and from IRI. And uh, so this piece is actually quite unique and uh, I wanna highlight a little bit because in RRI, IRI also for Nielsen, the, the identity of the store is actually is, is hidden, right? And we don't know the identity of the store. And so what we did is that we went to RRI and went through a whole set of legal steps and we asked them about the identity of this store and they are able to just tease out that particular store's marketing activity as well as uh, some other information and give it to us. And we are very thank, thank, thank them for, the, for that. And so we got this particular data set assembled so to give you an even more concrete idea about how this uh, past data tracking uh, work, right, imagine in the store there's these two shelves, and uh, so the antenna are able to triangulate to the position of a consumer based on the carts, the radio frequency, and the, to this kind of traffic points, which are four feet apart. And uh, we also know the product where they stored on the shelf, and so this is correspondingly the category location. <laughs> And uh, so nearby, those will be the traffic points and that are associated with a particular category. So now when a customer pushing the cars, passing the store, passing these two shelves, they, they pass these three traffic points in front of the category and then that is a visit to the category. And then we also have the information about the layout of the store and we figure out, okay, each of the category where they're located in the store and based on the past tracking data, we can see whether a category is being visited and by customer and the time and duration of each of the customers. And uh, so the structure of analysis, we start with a category analysis and to see whether there's any change in the traffic floor and uh, flow in response to the advertising and uh, whether there's any change in the category sales in response to the advertising and whether there's any change in the timing and on the product level, we figure, we try to investigate the spillover within and across categories. And uh, so these are a very high level summary statistics across all the 21 categories that we have in our data. And uh, so take the 
uh, carbonated beverage, as an example, right? And so 97, it means across all the individual customers who visiting the store, 97 of them, 97% of them, they will pass by the soda section, right? And uh, so, and then, oh, 97, out of those people who passed by, right, 32% of them, they will put an item from the category into their basket. And in total, there are more than 100 and uh, more than 100 different products, UPC, stored at the section. And so on average, each week, there are about 16, 17 of the products in this soda category that is being promoted, that is being featured. And we have this information for all these 21 categories. And the first piece, I promise this is the only equation. Uh, <laughs> So we, uh, it's a very simple regression that we considered as a starting point. We basically, we regress the traffic for each category at a given week and during a given week on a whole set of marketing controls, right? And uh, so including the display, the average price, uh, the price promotion, and uh, also control the category fixed effect, the week fixed effect. And most importantly, and we are interested in this number of features for product within that category during that week. From this regression, what we found is the following, okay? So uh, the dependent variable is the number of category visits or traffic. We want to see when there are more number of features in the category, whether there's an increase in the, uh, in the number of visits. So we tried three different definitions about how we define a visit. And what we found is, okay, whether we define it as passing, you have to pass three traffic points belong to the category or five traffic points or seven traffic points. None of them, none of them is significant. So in other words, what we found here is that feature advertising has no effect on the category traffic whatsoever. So this result is very consistent. We tried out all different type of uh, robins checks, right? Control the, the baseline level of the traffic. And uh, for example, soda get 90% 90 per, 90 of the traffic in the store and by mayonnaise and butter has less, uh, less than 5%. So we control all those and uh, so also try to also different other things, but none of them, they uh, have, a, have a significant effect for the traffic. And we, then we also look into the timing. And uh, so if the customer have this particular item on their shopping list because they saw the ad, and uh, potentially they should have visited the category at an earlier time during their trip. So we consider two measures on this dimension one is, okay, the minutes passed, has passed since you started your shopping trip. And another one is a fraction, right? Fraction of the time has elapsed uh, since you started your, uh, since your shopping trip. And neither of this has a significant effect. And uh, so, and then we try another definition, which is we only focus on those customers who have bought anything from that category and the repeat the regression, focus on these two measures, and we found no effect either. And so in this case, feature advertising has a little effect. And uh, so lastly, and then we consider, uh, next we'll consider the duration, right? And if the person stand in front of shelf and the condition on they bought anything and at the checkout and we found out and whether they actually spend less time in front of the shelf. So in this case, if it is a, uh, if it is a planned shopping case, right, and you already have the item on your shopping list, you should have picked up faster, right? And however, what we find is whether it's at the category level or at the product level, the feature advertising itself has no effect on the duration spent in front of the shelf. And so people, they don't spend more or less time in front of the shelf, when they have been exposed to the ads. So, and in terms of the sales, we do see there is an increase in the sales. So the first thing that we found is, okay, there is no, uh, no, increase, in the, uh, no increase in the number of customers visiting the category. This is consistent with the traffic effect, okay? And advertising does not increase the number of um, customers visiting. 
but we do see there's an increase in the sales for the advertised products. So why is that the case? And then we dive deeper into two segments of customers. We're trying to find out, so for customers who buy only one product, so the strawberry flavor of yogurt, and we see there's no effect. And then we look into customers who buy a variety of different products, so strawberry, blueberry, yogurt, uh, yogurt. and so in this case, we find there is a great increase in the sales. So what this analysis tells us is, first, feature advertising lead to more sales, right, which is assuring, and, but there's a little effect of number on the number of customers who purchase, and so this is consistent with the now effect of category traffic. So the sales increase, where does it come from? It mainly comes from people who buy a greater variety. So if you only buy one product, and there's no effect on you. But if you are buying more product, okay, and the number of products in your basket and increase, and uh, in facing of the like, feature advertising. So in other words, the customers, they are interacting with interacting more with a category and they start to choose a different products, different variety. So in terms of the, uh, the spillovers, and so this is the, another dimension we try to dive into the data, is trying to see, okay, whether there's any spillover effects when you advertise one product, whether it will affect, say, some neighboring categories in the neighborhood, in the vicinity. And so we focus on two shelves Right, belong to two categories that are 10 feet apart. And we want to see if there's one category, there is an increase in the number of feature advertising, whether that will have a big impact on the neighbor category, where we find a no effect. Okay? And so we also try a whole set of different setting, different regressions, and so this is very robust. And then another dimension is within the category, whether there, there is any spillover. We first, first am trying to establish, okay, feature advertising, it does work. If this focal product is being featured, there is a greater sales, right? And so it will boost up the sales. But on another hand, more importantly is, if there are more alternative brands in your category that are being, being advertised, your own sale will increase. I think this is very important. In other words, the effect is actually much larger than the own advertising. So in other, uh, you can think of this as, okay, your competing brands or other brands in your category that are being promoted, right? And uh, there will be a positive spillover on you. You will benefit from your competing brands' advertising. So uh, in terms of the high-level theory, what, what kind of theory can explain this pattern that we discovered in the data? We find the plant shopping is unlikely because of the now traffic effect. And on another hand, that the memory and the ad consumption are something that is more likely. And so that's our conjecture. So in summary, and uh, we find that feature advertising does not increase the traffic and that does not cause more customers to buy does not increase the number of traffic, uh, customers. The increase in the sales come from the same number of customers, but they are buying more stuff, buying a greater variety, and lead to greater within category spillover. And we think the exposure, uh, the endogenous ad exposure, trying to look through the circular actively, proactively, and the memory and the reminder story is more likely to be the case. All right, so that's all, thank you very much. My question is, uh, it's basically two parts. Okay. Um, how do you think the availability of uh, things like Amazon Fresh and delivery to home impacts uh, your analysis? That's the first part. The second part is, uh, did you consider that different age groups or adults at different uh, stages in their life shop a little differently? For example, I'm a parent with a mm -hmm. young child. I go to the grocery store only for the uh, things that I don't get in a, a, a wholesale store like Costco. Mm. So then I, 
I, I'm shopping more at Costco and Sam's and mm. only for the things that I really don't get at Costco, I'm going to the grocery store. Yeah. So then your summary status, st statistics and the map yeah, is getting yeah, impacted yeah. or yeah. skewed yeah. quite a lot. So for the second question, I'll answer your second question first. For the second question, and our data are not able to answer it because the, the tag were stick to the, uh, to the cart, to the basket. We only know the cart is moving. We won't be able to go back to the identity of the consumers. So that dimension we cannot answer. So the first question is about the online, the spillover. Uh, so if there's more people start to shop on the online and whether that will affect this. Okay, so uh, one thing that uh, I wanna highlight, so the data that we got is from uh, 2012. And so upon that time, I think the online shopping is for grocery at least is not a big thing yet. And um, a second dimension is that we focus on a short time span, which is only four weeks. Just look at those four weeks of data and the trying to figure out the shopping pattern. So from that dimension, I think the effect, if there's adding from online uh, retailer and it will be minimal. Okay, thank you. Yes. that um, feature advertising is good for retailers, but not necessarily good for brands? Mm, uh, I wouldn't say it's not necessarily good for brands in the sense that uh, there, because of there's a positive spillover effect, right? Yeah, so in other words, even if your competing brands is being advertised, and sometimes you may benefit from this kind of uh, advertising. In other words, so the, it will enhance the consumer's interaction with the category as a whole. Okay. I'm just thinking he's putting the bell. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes, please. Uh, hi. Um, a question of clarification. When you talk about feature advertising, mm -hmm. and I worked in the industry for many years, are you talking about the circulars that you get inside a grocery store? that have all the different products and prices. Is that what you're talking about for yes. feature advertising? Are you talking about best food day ads in newspapers? Uh, this is mainly the circulars. But but there are, we used to put them in newspapers every Thursday. And yeah, that's... Is that uh, included? So uh, I don't... In the IRR data, and they do not, dis, they do not explain where the ads were being placed. We only know there is a feature advertising. I so I, okay. I, I cannot answer you. I don't know whether it's being in the circular or in the newspaper in some insert. Stores, you know, Costco does direct mail, for example. Yeah. I mean, they do yeah. them a lot of different ways now. Yeah, I agree. And they found, by the way, in the, the company I worked with, mm -hmm. this was very efficient advertising. You talk about, yep. does it help the brand? Absolutely. It was the most yeah. efficient thing they did in marketing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, whether it's covering yeah. the same period, I can't tell you. But so these, yeah, and the data is a composite products. and potentially through all different channels. Right, right? and and they mm -hmm. did not assume that you had any sort of spillover effect. In other words, we okay. had, we had thirty five brands, and we each one had its own feature advertising schedule, because yeah. if we advertised brand A, we could not assume it would affect brand B. Okay, then our our finding shall be important to them. Okay, and because of this, probably they could think about how to do this uh, more with a more synergy. Thank you.